Hello, everybody. This is Ryan over at High Carb Generator. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I have Sandy with me. She's um, I've been interviewing a lot of people who are raw vegan. I really wanted to start finding people who are like whole food plant based um, because I want everybody to know that you can also do that as far as weight loss or feeling better or whatever it is. I'm going to link all of her dis uh, uh, links down in the description. And you have a website, too, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I've blogged for a few years. I haven't done it recently because I find that I'm so over recipes. I just make easy meals, but I do have a blog that I can link. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll link that one down below uh, too as well. So welcome to the channel. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, this is fun because I see you post posting in my comment section uh, fairly often. So anyways, um, how exactly I this is the first question I ask everybody. How did you come across whole food plant-based or vegan or whatever however you started? Oh, my journey starts about 16 years ago. And I read the book Skinny Bitch. And oh, I've heard of, of that, course, yeah. because I, yeah, yeah, I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to be a skinny, maybe not a bitch, but <laughs> a skinny person. And I had always had this uh fed into my you know, childhood, oh, you're just from big people, you have big genes, you'll always just be a bigger person and you'll have to accept that, um, you know. And so when I saw this book, I was like, okay, I want to read this book, I want to see what it says. And it not only touched on, you know, animal cruelty but also the environmental issues and health issues and I was like, oh, my goodness, where has this been all my life? Um I always considered myself a huge environmentalist. You know, I had a timer in the shower so that I didn't shower longer oh, wow. than five minutes, <laughs> you wow. know, <laughs> but I didn't use too much water and I recycled everything possible mm -hmm. and I take a water bottle with me so that I didn't have to buy bottled water and to find out that the best thing that I could do for the environment was just not eat animal products for me was a no-brainer. Um, and then at the back of the book, it had recommended other reading. And one of the books that it uh, recommended was Neil Barnard's Turn okay. Off the Fat Genes. And ironically, I had bought that book like two weeks earlier and I just hadn't got to reading it yet because I'm a bit of a slow reader. And so then from reading about going vegan from Skinny Bitch, I went to Whole Food Plant Based by reading Neil Barnard's book. And that was 16 years ago. Wow. So you started off as uh, basically a starchivore. Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Uh, most of the people I talked to actually started, because uh, around that time that you're talking about, that book, that book that came out is um, like a lot of raw vegans were coming out on the scene. Did, did you ever consider like the whole raw vegan thing? I think I had looked at it like freely and people like that. And I just thought that's too hard. It's not sustainable in my life. I had a child, you know, I worked and it was just like, I'm not going to be able to sustain that. And so I guess I went down the avenue of whole food plant-based because through Neil Barnard, I then found, you know, John McDougall and T. Colin Campbell and all of those people who encouraged starches and cooked food. And for me, that was easy. I could make a family meal and everybody could eat eat it so yeah that's so question. was it initially about weight loss for you or or was it is it uh, just environmental i think i wanted to lose weight when i read skinny bitch but then because i was so uh found out about the animal abuse and environmental reasons and health reasons long-term health i'd had grandparents who had had health problems and so it was it was just so many factors that I couldn't not do it. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily that one stood out for me more than the other. It was just I can't be this person who harms animals the way that eating animal products does. I can't harm the environment. I can't risk my long-term health by eating things that I now know cause the diseases that we think are just diseases of old age. They're not. Yeah. And, and so what kind of diet did you, were you on before that? You know, cause I don't, I don't know what a standard Australian type diet looks like. I would, I guess I consider a standard Australian diet is very similar to a standard American diet, but perhaps not as voluminous. So I guess the average person still goes to KFC and McDonald's and they come home and they think that, 
a roast chook with a salad is a perfectly acceptable meal. And don't forget to drizzle oil all over the salad because that's really healthy. But this is kind of what people think is, is normal. You know, ham and cheese sandwich for lunch. I might eat an apple of an afternoon and then go and have some kind of muesli bar or something. And I think that my world is so far removed from what everybody else's world is at the moment that I don't even know what people eat anymore because I just look at everybody else and go, well, you're eating crap, you're eating crap, you're eating crap. I don't know what people eat. I yeah. just kind of stick in my lane and that's what I do. So, yeah, speaking of that, so I, I assume because uh, 16 years ago, it really wasn't well known like it kind of is now. It's getting pushed a little bit more. How much pushback did you get? Um, I guess, I don't know. People are like, oh, what are you doing that for? And when I explained my reasons, I think people thought it would be a very short-term thing. You know, oh, yeah, well, we'll see how you go. Oh, you're still doing that thing are you yeah I'm kind of from the moment I committed to it I knew I'd be doing this for life um and it's it's funny to see how nowadays the variety and availability of vegan junk is insane mm -hmm. absolutely insane you can be a really really unhealthy vegan if you want to be whereas back then there was maybe two mock meat products and they were nowhere near as mock meaty as today's no. standard and they weren't things. good it so was, nobody ate them yeah exactly um there wasn't even any vegan yogurt um and there was just a couple of varieties of, of soy milk um and there wasn't like almond milk and hazelnut milk and macadamia milk and 50 billion milks it was like you have soy milk and you pick between the three brands and that's it so in that way because it was so long ago I was always forced to eat legumes and grains and and I think the good thing too when I went vegan or whole food plant-based uh I learned to eat more variety of foods I'd never eaten brown rice before and so that concept that brown rice was better than white rice was like oh, okay, I'll give it a try. And I'm not saying white rice is bad, don't take me wrong, but I'm saying it opens up my world. You know, I tried quinoa and millet and legumes, like a variety of legumes, black beans, white beans, chickpeas, all these things that I had never tried before. And so to me, it wasn't, you know, taking things out of my diet. It was like, oh, look at all these foods I can eat that I didn't even know existed before. <laughs> And so I did, did you feel better or did you, did you not notice a difference? Yes, I definitely felt better. I just more energy and my skin cleared up. I just, I felt better in myself. And I think too, knowing that I was doing the right thing for myself and my body and at everybody's environment and every single animal that I was no longer harming, of course I felt better. <laughs> Okay. This really interests me. I didn't, I didn't know that you were that starch from the whole time. So did you go through a, a like a detox at all? Cause I know a lot of us who go raw vegan to start. So you know, you didn't go through any of that. No, just started eating my rice and potatoes and my legumes and my veggies and fruit. <laughs> so I, I really like how Neil Barnard puts it as the four food groups, you know, and to me, it just really simplified it. And meant what is the that four food groups? Uh, so fruit and veggies, whole grains and legumes. So it doesn't have to be hard. And I think people think that switching to this way of eating or changing the way that they eat is really difficult and they don't know what to eat. And if you just think of those four food groups, it just becomes really easy to think of meals. Um, so did you get any pushback from your immediate family? Because I, I know you you had a daughter. Yeah, so she would kind of eat with me because, well, that was the meal I was preparing. And I did, it took me a few more years to understand that this was really valuable for her as well. And then I remember reading, it was a T. Colin Campbell, just a, a website page that he'd written about how valuable it is for children as well. And so then I encouraged her to get on board. Um, and now my husband did take a few years to join me in that department yeah. and I sat down with him one night and said, will you watch Forks Over Knives with me? And he said, okay, I'll, I'll watch this movie. And then it was the following day and I remember it like it was yesterday. He came down the stairs and he said, 
we're going to Subway for lunch. I'm having my last ever chicken sub and we better go quick before I change my mind. And I was like, are you doing this? And he goes, we're not talking about it. <laughs> and then he's been like cold to perky since as well, just eating with us. And it definitely makes family meals easier that we're all eating the same thing. Um, my extended family, like my parents, they have accepted it. And when they come over, they eat whole food plant-based with us. Um, but other than that, I haven't really had anybody jump on board with me in terms of my extended family, but our household is all whole food plant-based, except for the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my cat who's walking around right. Yeah, no way. Um so do you guys go out to restaurants a lot? Is, is that a thing? And, and is it, does it make it pretty difficult? Not a lot. Um, it's more the oil factor that I find hard in terms of eating out. And, well, these days there's so many mock products. If you want to go to a burger joint, mm. it's not just a, a veggie patty that has beans and peas and corn or whatever it's it's a mock meat and so we avoid that kind of um thing we do go to Thai restaurants uh probably the easiest to eat out at because you can ask for can you cook this with no oil and they understand they just understand um and it's easy to get rice and just a veggie dish so that's probably our preference when we eat out occasionally we will go and get a pizza somewhere and say and if you say no cheese, they're like, oh, we've got vegan cheese. And we're like, no, hold that as well. And the other thing that we found we have to say to pizza places is if you're not getting cheese, they want to put oil on the top. And so we say no oil, just the veggies, the pizza base, and then put some extra sauce on top because it helps keep the toppings down and is extra taste and they're not dry. Um, and, yeah, but we don't eat out often. It's not very often at all. Probably not even once a month. Okay. So that's really not <laughs> something you have to worry about. Uh, on a side yeah, note, if you're in America, um, I don't know how it is in other countries, but in America, if you get what's called the tomato pie is basically what you're describing. They always put Parmesan in it. So you have <sighs> to make sure you tell them not no Parmesan in the sauce. Most of yeah. the time. So as a side yeah. note. Now, I'm no, it's fascinating hearing things like that from other countries because I I know there was one pizza shop that had cheese in their sauce, but when we said no cheese, they said, oh, there's cheese in the sauce. We're like, do you have any other sauce? But most places would just have a plain um, marinara sauce. That oh, they yeah, not here. We're the land of the cheese. I mean, you know, you can't, you really get, like, if you're just going to get, like, a standard bottle of, uh, like, tomato sauce, you really have to look, especially locally, because there's a lot of uh, Italian uh, local Italian things, Parmesan yeah. almost every time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I'm not even sure of, is there like a, circ a certain macro ratio that Bernard talks about, like as far as like m mostly carbs or mostly whatever? Yeah, I guess it's mainly 80, 10, 10. And it just ends up being that by default. It's not that, he encourages a macro ratio and same with uh john mcdougall he doesn't encourage a macro ratio but that's what it naturally falls into if you're limiting nuts and seeds um and just having a lot of those you know whole starches and wet starches okay and you mentioned mcdougall when when did you come across the starch solution um i was I knew who John McDougal was before the starch solution came up. So I have some of his really, really old books, like the women's book, and I've got my bookshelf over there, the Maximum Weight Loss Plan and the McDougal Program and all of those books um, I had even before the starch solution came out. I actually pre-ordered the starch Did solution. You? And I guess I yeah, just found out about him because – when I first went vegan, the internet was kind of new and there was kind of information popping up. And so I found out all the different doctors by default as I researched more and more for who was out there who, who followed this way of eating and who else recommended this way of eating. Because to me, it wasn't good enough that I'd read one book that, 
you know, said don't have oil and eat this food. I wanted to know, well, was Neil Barnard valid or was he just some other crazy person who wrote a book? Because there's lots of crazy people who write books with really garbage diet advice. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. so I went on this journey of discovery of, you know, all the different plant-based doctors and found that, you know, someone might have a tweak here or there, but they're pretty much recommending the same thing, eat whole plant foods. and they all say don't have oil. Did you ever hear of uh, Nathan Pritikin when you were doing yes. this? Yeah, yeah. he's a- but I heard of- Sorry, off you go. No, go ahead. I, I can. I was going to say I'd only heard of him because of um, John McDougal mentioning him. Okay. Not independent by himself and i i feel like the movement here wasn't as as big and as strong as it was in america um and i guess it is kind of now moving along a bit but it's more towards junk food vegan Mm. whereas i kind of got the impression that in america there was lots of people well not lots but like a significant more amount of people who were following whole food plant-based it's not hard to do. Like if you go into certain rest, especially like Lebanese and um, just different Middle Eastern, they'll actually put like, what's it? WF whole food plant based uh, WFB PB, like in, in like the, you know, the little thing to know, let you know which, which one's which and, and all that. You can find that. But I just found that Nathan Pritikin actually, I think, is basically where it got McDougal kind of almost everything from. But he only he said that you could eat potatoes every all day. But he he had some weird stuff about limiting rice and everything like that. I I I, I don't I'm assume Bernard isn't like that. No, well, he has said, you know, you don't need to limit these foods because in a way they're self-limiting. Their fiber content and their volume content means that he is essentially saying you can't overeat on these foods. Well, not that you can't overeat, that most people, the average person would struggle to overeat. Yeah. Did you ever do the the maximum weight loss type, you know, 50-50 plate? Oh, I tried that and it is, I don't know, it's a bit limiting, I think, because I found that I sometimes just wanted more starch than that to feel energy. And some days I just wanted to eat more than 50% of my plate of like salads, and I just found that I didn't want to be that limited and I quite enjoy making my own soy yogurt and soy is a no-no on the maximum weight loss plan. And so for me it just was not a good fit. And that's not to say that other people wouldn't work wonderful for, but I just want a bit more flexibility than that. And the two fruits, of thought. <laughs> I can't deal with the two fruits a day thing. The, the two fruits. I love fruit. And when oh, it's yeah. hot here in summer, I want to have more than two pieces of fruit. So that's my only thing with that. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh uh, did you ever do any kind of like athletics? No. I'm not. Well, that I don't like quick. <laughs> I I occasionally run up and down the street and I like to do yoga and I used to do dance, but I've never been into like athletics. No. People are gonna want to know though, did you did you lose weight on uh, on doing it? The, uh... Um I was not overweight to start with, but I did find that my weight came down naturally when I just ate those yeah whole plant foods and then my weight stabilized at a reasonable level so but i i was overweight as a child mm. but then in my teenage years and early 20s i was trying every diet out there to not be you know what i considered a bigger person than i was always warned i was going to be um and that's why i read skinny bitch i was like okay right i want to be skinny so yeah yeah was the the keto or the, or the carnivore like a big thing over there or paleo ever uh, a big uh, in australia yeah i think there's a lot of people who think that keto is the answer um and especially in recent times that's been a big thing i've heard people talking about it every now and then and i just oh it's so frustrating but i feel like you can't talk to people who are convinced that keto is the answer because 
they just don't understand about glycogen makes you store weight and they're so addicted to the number on the scale and they're not understanding that they're losing water weight. They're not actually losing fat and the long-term consequences of what they're doing, but they they just don't understand. They're like, well, I lost a kilo this week. Whoop, whoop. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting really bad. Like it seems like everywhere. I, I know I've even seen like Durian Rider. Um, I you know who Durian Rider is. Yeah. yeah, I've even seen him post like some uh, about Australian news about pushing it, and he shows pictures that he the the newscasters when they were skinny, and then they started doing keto, and they 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 ballooned up. Oh, yeah. I know. So I don't understand why people think it's a miraculous thing. I, I, well, to quote John McDougall, people love to hear good news about their bad habits. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever run into any problems, uh, you know, on the what, what you're doing? No, I haven't had any problems in terms of um, – like nutrition wise, I did restrict for a few years and that kind of threw me off a lot. And I was, I wanted to be even skinnier, even skinnier. And so I did, I restricted what I ate and I got skinny and I loved being really, really skinny, but then I just had no energy and I was so lethargic all the time. And, and it was really funny because in my head, I was like, Oh, I'll just eat more veggies. And I was eating huge, huge volumes of food, like two kilos of veggies. And I was not satiated at all. It was just ridiculous. And I would eat this volume of veggies and be so physically full and bloated but feel like I could still eat the entire house. And it wasn't until I accepted that going back to I need starch, humans yeah. need starch, that I found energy again and felt amazing. And for a while there it looked like I was ridiculously overeating. I would sit and eat potatoes and potatoes and huge bowls of oatmeal and huge bowls of rice Um but it gave me energy back and I felt better. And so I just went, you know what, that's fine. If I'm going to be a bit bigger than I really want to be, I'll just accept that at this size I am healthy and I'm eating well and I have energy and I can do things. And and so that's the payoff that I had to make for, for me. Oh, that's interesting. So you, um, wow. So you, you basically were under eating and then your body needed to come back to equilibrium equilibrium and it started force feeding itself to eat right absolutely and i can't explain to people that drive to to eat when you are essentially underweight it is like all you think about all day every day is food and nothing feels satisfying and i would like I said, I was restricting, restricting, and I would have huge volumes of veggies. And then I'd like binge every two or three months, huge binges like crazy. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is stupid. If I just ate enough starch in the day, I would stop the binges. I'd feel better. I wouldn't have this crazy mania in my head happening. And, yeah, and it did mean that I was going to be a bigger size than I wanted to be because the who, I mean, every woman wants to be skinny, don't they? We're told by society that's what you have to be. <laughs> so, not me. But, yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't think you know what kind of a golden nugget this is because I hear about this all the time. Everybody t tells people, you know, starve yourself, go out, over exercise. I mean, what's your response to that? Don't. Your body is designed to make you seek food when you under eat and when you over exercise and that drive that you have after a, a period of essentially starvation you will not be able to resist it you will not be able to fight back you might feel really proud of yourself if you can sustain it for six months eight months nine months a year whatever but as long as you restrict the body's going to force you to come back and to to find itself again and where it is healthy. Um, women obviously have a very easy indicator of what that is. I don't know if men do, but you can feel it in yourself. And that sense of thinking that you can starve yourself to reach a goal is just going to pendulum swing. And, yeah, it, it changes hormonally. They say your leptin and your ghrelin levels change so that your body will go eat 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 just make up for lost time so don't do it don't even start the starvation diet yeah. so, you know eat as much as you need to satisfy your body of whole plant foods hmm. 
That's perfect. Yeah, because I don't think all of us are supposed to be rail thin. It just it yeah. isn't it, it isn't really a thing. And I, I think that uh, social media is making that worse. I, I don't know. What do you think about that? Absolutely. And and not even social media. I think there's just well, I grew up in in the nineties. I mean, we had Kate Moss and Ali McBeal, what's her name? Calista Flockhart as, as models imitated to us as this is what women should look like. You know, and I don't know anybody my age who who grew up thinking that a normal sized body was actually healthy. We had that, you know, stick thin image. Um posted to us as this is what women should look like and I do think a lot of that is still on social media today but I don't think quite as much as as back then because there's a lot of uh body image awareness Mm -hmm. these days and encouragement of you know women being a little bit more voluptuous um you know the Kardashians, for example. I've never watched that show in my life, but people tell yeah. me, like, look at them. They they say, you know, have a have some bum and have some hips. So I don't think it's quite as extreme as it was back in the nineties and early thousands. Right. Uh, but I definitely think there is still pressure there to just have this perfect body. And you know what? Some people just don't have the shape they want or the size they want. But if we're being healthy and true to ourselves, we will fall into a naturally healthy body weight range, even if it doesn't mean your body looks exactly like you want it to look like. Surely health is more important. Yeah, I do get a lot of people coming onto my uh, comments saying that they want to get down like, I don't know, say like 140 pounds. I don't know. It was like 67 kilos or something like that. And um, I'm like, I, I don't, I mean, I'm not your body. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's even possible for you, but people want to shoe them, shoehorn themselves into a body that, that they might not even be able to achieve without like serious, like Kate Moss that you were just talking about. She was like a Coke addict. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course that. you're going to be skinny on something like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not worth it, is it? I mean, no. it, it still has a consequence to your health, even if they don't see it at the time, long term. You know, your body's never not looking. Isn't that what Michael Clapper says? You yeah. know, your body knows <laughs> what you're putting into it. Yeah. Speaking of health, do you do you have your blood work done a lot? Have you ever had uh, been super low in anything? Um, I am low on vitamin D because I'm a bit of a creature of the indoors. And other than that, I've never had problems. And what's really fascinating is even when I was restricting, I was having blood tests and all my blood work came back fine. There was nothing wrong with me. And, you know, the doctor's like, oh, okay, well, everything's fine because, you know, you have no nutrient deficiencies or anything like that. So, and I probably should spend more time in the sun, but, you know, that means going outdoors. (laughs) That I I don't understand. I like the outdoors, but I like walking at night. I'm a night owl. And so I will walk up and at night. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So there's not really sun at night. (laughs) (laughs) You know, one thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, because you're you're like more of a starch person. Have you ever done like an all potato thing or like an all uh, potatoes, the one that you hear mostly about? I, I don't think it's very beneficial i think it'll work if you needed it to but i mean what what's your thoughts on doing all all potatoes or something like that uh i just feel like i don't like to go for fads is my thing and i'm like what's the purpose of doing that if you're just going to go back to eating grains and legumes afterwards to me i don't understand the reasoning behind wanting to just eat only potatoes so i've never tried it i have zero interest in trying it i know that some people say it'll recalibrate your taste buds and in my mind if you have enough self-control to eat only potatoes then you have enough self-control to eat only healthy food it doesn't take a genius to go i'm only eating a potato okay i'm not going to eat a burrito filled with whatever junk it is so i have never tried that and i'm probably not very interested in ever doing that kind of thing it just doesn't i don't see a purpose if you're just going to go back to eating you know other things later anyway yeah um and a a comment that i get quite a bit is about beans um how much do you include beans or 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 do, do you think they should even be on the menu 
some people they can cause bloating and gas, but I also think that might be people who are not used to eating them regularly um, is my understanding of it. And I think they're very healthy and very filling. They're far more satiating for me than potatoes. Um, so we include them in our menu. I don't necessarily say I have to have it every day or I have to have this amount or that amount. You know, I'll cook rice and beans sometimes or I'll have a Mexican dish and put some black beans in or we'll make red lentil stew or we'll have chickpeas. And um, But I don't have a, a set rule mm. about how much I eat. I do think they're really healthy. I think they're really satiating. For people who are struggling and saying, well, I don't feel full on rice or potatoes, add beans in and you might find that they satisfy you a lot more. Um, and I don't think this idea that they're they're poisonous or, or whatever is, is real. I mean, because essentially when we looked at that, oh, I forget the name of the book, there was a man who was saying, don't eat beans, they're so bad for you. And he was talking about when they were raw. Yeah, I don't know I about you. I can't, exactly, I can't eat a raw bean. I no, cook we're not them. Horses. They need to be yeah, cooked for a long time. So there's yeah. nothing wrong with beans. Enjoy them. There's so many different varieties of them. You can, If you don't like one, try another one. There's so many different ones. And if somebody was just watching this video and, and wanted to get into it, um, where would you suggest starting? Um, that's a good question. I would suggest starting really, really basic. If you're eating, what are you eating at the moment? Are you eating a, a chicken stir fry with noodles? We'll just put the chicken out, pull the chicken out, put some chickpeas in. You know, I'm having a, a bolognese and I'm using mints. Well, put some veggies in, use lentils, get rid of the mints, you know, get rid of the cheese, put some noosh, um, nutritional yeast on top. So try and think of what are the meals that you eat now and how can you swap something to make them healthier uh, and to make them plant-based. And that way I think people don't feel overwhelmed because if they – start and they don't know where to start think of what you're eating and you don't have to change it that much you can eat your food and just swap it um yeah and there's so many good resources there's you know john mcdougall's website there's the pcrm website which is neil barnard's website you know um there's t colin campbell's nutrition studies website there's uh dr gregor's nutrition facts there's so many tools these days and information available to people that wasn't there years and years ago so you know become an information junkie and and find out you know a reason why you want to do it have you seen uh mcdougall's uh i wish i had it down here i don't have it down here the the cookbook that he has i think it's like 200 recipes or something like that uh just a, is it the quick and easy one <laughs> it might be I, I wish i had it down here but you know i i'm gonna put like a picture across the screen here of it um, I think that's a good place to get started too. Like if somebody was really interested, because most of his meals are like 10, 15 minutes and you're done. Yes, exactly. And there's also the Forks Over Knives website. That's a really good tool and has easy meals. But I think that, I think you might be mentioning the quick and easy McDougal cookbook. And I that is literally really quick recipes. So yeah. quick and so easy. And so for people who don't know how to cook, that's the first first place to go is something that won't overwhelm you. Because if you get overwhelmed with trying to find recipes, you're not going to uh, make it sustainable for yourself. And I think that's why I've gotten out of blogging the last few years is because I don't really do recipes. I'm like, chop an onion, chop some garlic, throw it into a pan. What what veggies have we got in the fridge? Throw it in. Oh, there's some legumes. Throw them in. What am I going to put on the side? Rice or potatoes or something. I don't really make recipes anymore. It's throwing meals together so that it's easy, it's sustainable, and that I don't, it doesn't have to be fancy to be nourishing. So you don't do any, do you do any kind of like gourmet or any kind of, you know, fancy stuff? Or is you just kind of save that for like holidays or something? Yeah, save that for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to experiment in the kitchen a bit, but I don't have time when I'm coming home from work, you know, and it's nearly dinner time. And, but occasionally I'll cook a recipe. I love 
looking at cookbooks. I absolutely yeah. love that. I have so many plant-based cookbooks, but I I can't actually remember the last time I cooked from one. It's more like, oh, look at the pretty picture. Next page. Oh, look at the pretty picture. We should try this someday. And then four years later, you still haven't tried it. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you use like an instant pot or or anything like that to kind of make your life easier? Yeah, I have an instant pot. Well, uh, I have one that's called a crock pot because years ago when I bought it, they didn't have the instant pot in Australia. Um, I use that to cook our legumes, so I will batch cook them because it's quicker and easier than doing it on the stove and I can get a lot more volume compared to canned beans. I'm not against canned beans and I use them when I need to, but it's much cheaper to for us when we're using legumes, you know, several times in the week to just batch cook it. I'll also cook rice in there, um, stews and things. Definitely makes life easier. It does push actually. Push a button. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, you just push a button. Push a button. button. Cooks itself and I walk away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, not this Sandy, but my ex, uh, ex, uh, Sandy, I told her, I'm like, uh, she used to like to make this, uh, green lentils. Is that what they are? Green lentils. And I'm like, I guarantee they're better in the instant pot. And it would only take me like five minutes in the instant pot. And they were like from, from dry to, to ready. And, uh, she couldn't believe how much better they were. So I, I, I suggest, you know, of all things, maybe an instant pot might be the best thing and a rice cooker. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I ended up buying a rice cooker as well so that if I had like a stew or something cooking in the Instant Pot, then I could cook rice on the side as well because otherwise it's, oh, bun me, I want to cook the rice in the Instant Pot, but then it's like, oh. So I did end up buying a rice cooker as well. Yeah. A random question. Did you ever consider doing uh, like a different, like a raw vegan or just, uh, you know, more raw food? Um, I don't necessarily eat uh not raw i guess mostly my breakfast is i'll either have a sweet potato that i've cooked but then heaps of fruit and veggies with it i have a huge raw salad at lunch and just put some kind of starch with it and even in summer i'll have like salad often at dinner so i've never been someone who will eat only cooked food um and even percentage wise probably 50% of my day is raw anyway. Mm -hmm. I I would consider doing higher raw if I felt I had the time to eat it all. But when you have a half an hour lunch break and I'm flat out chewing all through all my salad in that time, I feel like it takes a lot more um, of prepping things as well. I, I That's just my, I guess, idea of it. And maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but it seems that a lot of people who eat raw make these elaborate dishes for dinner, and I don't have time for that. It's like rice in the pot, 10 minutes, done. So, and I don't have I don't have a huge desire to be all raw because I don't see a need for me. I guess if I felt down the track that I wanted to try it, I might. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> There's my half fluff answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm actually at the point of like done with any questions I, I might ask, but is there something that you wanted to add? Um, I don't think anybody has a reason not to eat whole plant foods. That's my, my thing I want to add. I don't care if people do it raw. I don't care if people do it high starch. I don't care if people do it all cooked. Just eat plant foods it's better for you it's better for all the animals it's better for everyone's environment don't find an excuse not to perfect now would you mind coming back on here i'll come back on if people want to see me be crazy again <laughs> <laughs> okay um anybody who wants more questions of sandy just leave it's so weird because you're sandy and sandy for 16 uh, like it's so weird but um <laughs> Any any questions for Sandy? Leave them down uh, below in the comment section. If I get enough of them, then I'll bring you back on here. Or if I just, you know, have a bunch of other questions, because I y your energy is amazing, and it, you can see what kind of energy that you can have just eating starches. I mean, it's 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 amazing. So, thanks for coming on here. I will put all of your links down in the description, so go check her out. And thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Awesome. Very surreal.